Hey guys, this is the sixth C sharp tutorial in the series, and in this tutorial we'll be looking at loop statements. And loop statements um, are it, it allows you to do the same code over and over again. So it, let's get started. First, you're going to want to create a new project, and make sure it's a Windows Forms application, and you can name it whatever you want, and then just click OK. All right. And the first thing we're going to do is add a button and a text box because we have never done this before. And then in order to, in, in this tutorial, we will be making it multi-line though. So to make it multi-line, you have one of two options. You can go over to here in the properties panel and select multi-line as true. Or you can click this little triangle up here and select the multi-line checkbox. Either way, doesn't matter. But once you've done that, just drag your text box to be approximately this large. It doesn't matter though. And then you're going to want to double click on the button. And the first loop statement that we'll be looking at is the for statement. So just type for, and then put a parenthesis. And now how for statements work is um, it will do it will do something a certain amount of t number of times, or you can have it go on forever. The fir we, first, we're going to look at a set number of times. So, in order to do that, you're going to have to make a new integer, int, and you can call it whatever you want. But most people usually use i as the um, as their integer for the for statements because it is usually not referenced outside outside of the for statement. So you're just going to have int i and have it equal to something. Most people use zero, and then just put a semicolon. And now, what? It's basically saying like while um um int int i is less than um or equal to. You can do one either or. You can do have it just less than, you, however many times you want it to do it or less than equal to. I suggest you do less than or equal to because then you know how many times it will do it and you don't have to like subtract one or something like that. But it's up to you. I'm just going to do less than or equal to and then I'm going to do it a hundred times. And then you're going to want to put another semicolon and put I plus plus and then put another parenthesis. Now what I plus plus does is it will add one to the integer i no matter what no matter what number it is it will add one to it now where you need two french curly braces an open and a closed and then you're going to need to have a little spot in here for to write your code so this will be the code that it'll do 100 times i'm going to have it do textbox one dot text and then this is something new um plus equals and what plus equals does is it it adds on to what is already in the current it, what is already in text box one dot text. If we just had it equal to, no matter what text box one dot text is, it will always be whatever we set it as. But since we're going to do plus equals, it will just simply add it on to the end of what already is text box one dot text. So I'll just have it write hello one hundred times in text box one dot text. And then we debug and you click button 1 we get hello 100 times the other way that you can use a for statement is you just get rid of everything in here and just put two semicolons and what that will do is we will have it right on forever it will have it just continue this code for forever but without the use of threading something we will look at in a later tutorial this will just freeze your program like look when we here when we do this and we click it, it just freezes it. And a way to debug and a way to stop debugging your program if it freezes, you can just right click it and close it and you'll have to like click through windows, or you can use task manager, or you can just click on the C sharp window, which you can still go to, and click F6, and then click yes to this message box. Alright, and the next and final um, loop statement we'll be looking at is the while statement. And the while statement is very similar to the for statement, except you don't need um, three different things. You only need one. So while um, anything is going on. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to do while um, 0 equals 0, which will always be true. And since this is checking to see if something is true or not, we need two equal signs. And then put another parenthesis there. And this time you don't need French curl. Wait, do you? Yeah, you do need French curly braces. I'm sorry. You do need French curly braces. I, I just don't use these while statements so off, off, too often. So, anyways, um, inside your French curly braces, have the code that you want to do it for for a while. We will just be using the same code that we used the last time. But if you are doing this on your own, you you feel free to like try anything new, anything you want to do, message boxes or anything like that. I don't recommend message boxes because that'll just fill your screen. But anyways, textbox one dot text plus equals, and I'll just have it say hello. Even though this will freeze our program because it will go on forever. See, it's all frozen up. So again, click F6. Stop debugging, yes. And we can do the same thing that we did with the um, for statements. But in the for statement, what we can do is we could do while textbox1.text is equal to Adam. Then it will do this code. So this also is going to require threading because it, we need to have a. Mm, when you click the button, it will freeze your program because it is always equal to the text box will always be equal to Adam unless it's if if the text box is equal to Adam when you click the button, it will always stay that way because your program will freeze. So it's best not to work with strings. However, this is an option if you know how to use threading, which we will get to in a later tutorial. So, we're going to use integers here. If you type int, and then you need to set it equal to something, or, well, actually, you need to define it first. So, we can put it, we need to name your, our integer. We can call it anything, but I'll just call it int1. Set it equal to 0. And while int, while int1, is less than or equal to anything you want. Again, we will have this do it a hundred times. We will have actually no, let's have ten, and then we can have message boxes. We will have ten message boxes show up saying hi. And then what we're going to do is since the I plus plus isn't built into the top part of this, you're going to have to have it I plus plus at the end or int one plus plus at the end. So it this does exactly the same thing as that for statement we looked at here. It's just a little bit different. So now when we debug, when it when we click the button, we should get ten message boxes. There, ten message boxes. And let's exit out of that. And there you go. There are your two main um, loop statements. If you have any questions on this code or found this tutorial confusing, please just leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to help answer your questions.